Okay, I need everybody to stand up. It's Pilates time. I don't know what that means. I just thought it sounded funny. Okay, I do have some questions for you though. I'm going to have you sit down based on some criteria. If you have never taught a class online, please sit down. Okay, if you have taught online one year or less, sit down. If you have taught two years or less, sit down. Three years, sit down. Let's jump to five years or less. Okay, how about six years or less? Eight years or less? Okay, we've got a few people standing 10 years or less. 12 years or we're gonna have a winner. I know who it is. <laughs> 10 years or less. Okay, let's go to 15 years or less. Oh, I thought that was gonna be our winner back there, but we're still going. We got two people. Okay, let's jump to 20. 20 years or less? No, okay. How many years? Uh, since 02. Since 02, okay, so 17 years? 2000. 2000, and our gentleman at the back, how many years? Okay, so yeah, so we had a variety here from people who had taught um, zero online classes to up to 19 to 20 years. That actually relates to what I'm going to talk about with project-based learning. Good timing, Trina. <laughs> okay, it's to, um, the de definition is to develop knowledge and skills through engaging projects designed around real-world challenges that we face. And it involves creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and then ownership of the project. This is really small to read, but you identify a challenging problem or a question. There's authenticity and that it represents a real world problem. There's a student voice, so the student has a lot of choice and control of it. There's reflection so that they can revise and then they receive feedback from the instructor, from other students, um, and then they use that in order to develop the project further. There's a lot of benefits. You can go online and Google. I picked out just a few. The maker mindset, it really promotes creativity. Um, the iterative thinking, because they try something, they revise it, they try it again. A growth mindset, we all ha hate failure, but that's part of the learning process. So it also teaches them, you're probably gonna have a failure, you revise it, you try it again. And so this represented what I wanted from my course that I taught. I wanted them to pick a challenge and then assess it related to nutrition education, look at the strengths and the weaknesses, research it, decide on an approach for the challenge that they identified, apply strategies, and then reflect so that they could revise if needed. I taught a class for the first time this summer, um, 10 students, and the reason we did that activity at the beginning is this is the challenge that I faced. I had one student doing a combined BSMS, so she had no nutrition education knowledge at all. I had one student that had been a dietitian for 25 years and had been counseling for 25 years, and then everybody in between. So I had to come up with assignments that were gonna be beneficial to everybody, just like we saw with this group, that if we were to create opportunities, there was a wide variety in terms of experience. This is the one I liked the best. Now, this is the details about it. They did counseling sessions with a family friend or a volunteer because of HIPAA, we needed to stay away from actual clients. Um, they recorded their session. They had to submit a three to five minute clip to me um, in terms of whatever they wanted me to see. They did an analysis and I'll show you what we used for this. And so they identified from their baseline counseling session a challenge, something they wanted to address based on what they were learning from the class. They had to watch their video, reflect upon it and um, analyze it and then from that challenge, they had to incorporate strategies in sessions two and three, and the idea was keep improving, keep improving, or just say, I'm no good at that, let's try another approach. And I cut out the person on the left, she was a client, I didn't have her permission, but this is just taken from a video clip. Now, this is a rubric I found online for counseling, so I loved it, I didn't have to develop it, but these are all the things they had to reflect upon. It goes on to a second page, they did the comments, and then they did a summary for me based on that reflection. 
Another assignment was nutrition and culture because it's very important um, with education, whatever you're talking about, that we have cultural awareness and cultural sensitivity. So they picked a group that they wanted to learn more about. And they had to research the group based on, again, another rubric that I found online and I adjusted just a little bit. But this prompted them about what cultural awareness and cultural competency would actually involve. And from that, they had to identify a possible challenge in presenting nutrition education and how they would overcome it. A third assignment was a small group facilitation. They had to lead a group of three or more, did not have to be nutrition. And based on another rubric I found online, these were the things that said you're a competent group leader if you can manage all of these things within a group. So they reflected and evaluated themselves based on that. The biggest project was a teaching project, and this is where they had to go outside their comfort zone and pick something they had never done before. So a couple of them picked MOOCs, Massive Open Online Class, had never heard of it. They had to evaluate the research out there. They wrote a paper. They did a five to 10 minute video presentation that they posted for all students to see, and then they had to pick four videos to watch and provide feedback and um, ask questions and get um, responses from everybody and the students Students picked more than four videos to watch. They didn't do the minimum. They wanted to watch them all. And these were the topics that they picked. And what was impressive is the majority of them went beyond. When they developed the MOOC, not only did they talk about the MOOC and the research it, they actually planned a week-by-week -week outline on cystic fibrosis education. Another one did it on heart health. One that did blogs actually asked to be a guest blogger on someone's blog, and her blog was accepted. So it's now going to be a requirement. Next time I teach this is you got to go a little further with it. And then we did the message board discussion talking about real world challenges out there. I mean, you look at the Time um, magazine covers, it's no, you know, not surprising there's so much consumer confusion. So we addressed all those things. I want to point out I did weekly quizzes. I only did these for accountability. The textbook was good. It was easy to read. I wanted to force them to read it every week whether they wanted to or not because it was good. Ten questions, open book, 30 minutes. I did not expect um, a lot to come from that other than I knew you were reading the book. So the feedback, the main thing I want to point out, I asked them, what was your favorite assignment? Six out of 10 said it was a counseling series. One of the things that many of them said was it pushed me outside my comfort zone because I had to watch myself provide a counseling session. So if I asked all of you to watch a one hour videotape of yourself presenting a class and critique it, raise your hand if you think that sounds fun. I thought Ben might raise his hand thinking that sounds fun. Yeah, so it forced them to watch themselves. And one student said, I've been counseling for 20 years. I thought I did a good job of paraphrasing my clients' responses, and I found out I hardly ever paraphrase. And I thought I was doing it all along. When I asked them the least beneficial, they all said, you know, there was really nothing that I would have taken away. But if I have to pick one least beneficial, not surprisingly, the weekly quizzes came up the most because they said it didn't promote long term learning wasn't my goal. I even told them at the beginning, this is just so you read the chapters every week. So we achieved what I was going for, that we identified a challenge. It had real world application. The student was in control of the assignment. They reflected upon it. They got feedback from me. They got feedback from other students. And then they had the opportunity to revise it. And many of them said, I am taking this project into my workplace. I'm presenting it to my superiors. And I want to start implementing and doing these things. So these last two quotes kind of sum up um, what I think project-based learning is. Every truth has four corners. As a teacher, I give you one corner, you find the other three. And it's the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy and creative expression and knowledge. So thank you.